people don't want to know God, who try to rationalize everything about the Christian faith with their human understanding. They try to rationalize, comprehend Christianity with their natural senses. Uh, uh, they can in the long run jeopardize their faith. You don't do that. And that is why many learned folks are always confused. Probably you've seen some of them. They are confused. When they tackle you about your faith in Christ, you understand their level. Because everything they want to see is when you add one to one, you get two. Someone was educating me yesterday that there's a new discovery in mathematics that one, to one plus one is no longer two. I said, okay, generally, everybody believes general mathematics, one plus one is two, right? But now, people who are doing probably applied mathematics are coming to some discoveries these days. And such people, how do you preach Jesus to them? How do you tell them about the word of God becoming flesh? How do you tell them that just when you have faith in Jesus, you'll be saved? That you don't have to pay money, you don't have to do some rituals, just have faith in the Son of God and you'll be saved. You see, they rationalize everything on the basis that they are confused. And uh, I mean, sorry, that is why many learned folks are always confused when it comes to the Christian beliefs. They always try to rationalize everything on the basis of science. On the basis of philosophy, of socialism and all kinds, secular humanism and all that. And you see, in the days of Jesus, in John chapter 6, they encountered him. Jesus fed the multitude supernaturally. You heard when someone was saying earlier on that he never believed in miracles. I want to let you understand, until you encounter a miracle, you might believe that it's, no, it's not possible. Until you encounter the supernatural you might also join people who believe the supernatural is false. It's not possible. But I'm telling you, he has experienced his own dimension. There are men who have encountered things in the realms of the spirit who have encountered even the supernatural, supernatural miracles. They are real. They are real. Amen. That's why we are different. We have been called into life and not religion. Praise the Lord. The word made flesh. He said, I may say right here, that as they, they follow after Jesus, he fed the multitude. And he began to talk shortly after in John chapter 6. No time to go into that this morning. And he made a statement that the bread that you ate in the wilderness, I mean, the bread that Moses gave him, the that God gave him, those that ate it, they still died. He said, but there's a the bread I'm going to give to you. A bread that you will eat and you will not die anymore. You will not also test again. And they said, evermore give us this bread. And some began to reason it out. How will this man give us bread to eat? And he said, even this bread I'm talking about is my flesh. And my blood. And they began to look at him, rationalize it. Some were even offended. I look at this man. I know his father's house. Joseph. He's not son of Joseph. We know his house. Then how come he's saying that he's not the bread from heaven, the, the living bread? That is where you divide between religion and life. The living God was in their midst. He said, he, he said, and he came unto his own. John 1, 12, he came unto his own, but his own did not receive him. And he said, for them that is it, to them he gave the power, hallelujah, to become the sons of God. Even to those who, who do believe in his name. But the people God sent him to, his own kindred, they did not receive him. He said, I'm the bread of life. They looked at him, I'm the bread from, bread of heaven. I mean, bread from heaven, I'm the living bread. And they could not believe him. They could not rationalize it. How do we eat you and we're eating living bread? And they were some were fed. Even some of his disciples left him. Some left him. Many, in fact, the Bible said many of his disciples from that moment, they stepped away from him. Why? Because he had, he had entered into some deeper dimensions of the faith. Deeper dimensions of the faith. Talking about the, the flesh. Jesus coming in the flesh. The word made flesh. Deeper dimensions of the faith. How do you know you're a Christian when you don't believe Jesus is coming in the flesh? How can you claim you're a Christian? Look, they, I said Christianity is deep, but it's not a mystic. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's deep, but it's not a mystic. But it tries on divine revelation. The word of God spoken... And he came and he, and he became flesh and he dwelt amongst us and that was Jesus, the son of God. It's a problem many people have today believing in Jesus. How do you tell me the word of God turned to flesh and you're saying he's the savior of the world? How do you tell me God as a son? Jesus is the son of God. It's what we are still contending with today and you as a Christian must let that be resolute in your heart. That belief 
that Jesus is the son of God and the word of God became flesh and you believe it. Because your, once you don't believe that, the foundation of your Christianity will be shaken. Christianity is no religion, it's no rituals. You, now, you need to have a deeper revelation of Jesus. Who is Jesus to you? Word made flesh came down from heaven and you saw there was nothing that was made that was, made, that, that was not made by him. All things were made for him. And this same word came to join our midst. And many find it difficult to believe that that is Jesus. And that is the son of God. And that is God. He said in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was God. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm bringing some dimensions of the, the, the things that constitute our Christian faith. Is the major contention in the world. That's why that word separates you from other religions. Because you were saying that God came down in the form of flesh. And he was born into the world and he died and rose again. And some say, how could God have a son when he didn't have a wife? You see a contention in the world today. And many Christians sometimes, they ask questions. Little children ask a lot of questions. Most I don't know if you have encountered some of them. They ask you that they told us that God, Jesus is the son of God. Who was his mother? But Jesus was his father. You know, they try to ask. Children ask very innocent questions. But you also know even mature Christians who have been in the faith for a while also have those questions in their hearts. The difference is revelation. Divine revelation. Because the truth is, Jesus is the son of God. Jesus literally came down from heaven. He was born of Virgin Mary. Literally, he died. He lived like you and I. He had flesh and blood like you and I. He died. On the third day, he was raised up and he ascended into heaven. He told them something. I told you I'm just the bread of life. I'm the bread from heaven. If you eat me, you will not die. I'm, uh, you live again. You will not thirst anymore. You will not hunger again. And he said, now you are even confused living. He said, when, I, when you begin to see me ascend from John 6, when you begin to see me ascend into heaven, then what will you say? I'm still saying I'm the bread from heaven. You are confused. Then when you see me literally with your eyes, go into heaven, then what will you say? Beloved, I'm bringing these dimensions to us. Let's know what our Christian faith stands upon. Let's know what we are defending. Jesus is the son of God. He's, 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 he's the word of God made flesh. Someone said the other day, a young lady was telling me that I've never seen a false prophet before. <laughs> I've never seen a pro false prophet. And I said, what? You've never seen a false prophet, but you've seen them. It's not only people who wear white garments that are prophets. I said, and I'll tell you that you have met them. I said an example in her life. She, took, she took a decision. Sometimes last year, she took a very funny decision. And she took the decision because of the people around her who told her certain things. And I said, those people around you, who, and, I mean, who deceived you into taking that decision are the false prophets in your life. False prophets represent people who counsel you or who tell you things that are contrary to the word of God. Things that are contrary to the will of God. These are the people who represent primarily the false prophets around you. They might not come in white garments. But you are going on the path of life. Pastor was teaching us on the path I mean, about the right door. Not every door you choose about. Those who go on the right path, choosing the right door, going on the right path, anyone who comes to deceive them and make them to turn from that right path is a false prophet in their lives. They tell you to do what? To do what kicks against the will and counsel of God for your life. Those are false prophets. They don't have to, we don't have to brand, brand them with that name, false prophet. First John chapter 4 from verse 1 talks about those who, he said, he said these false prophets are in your midst already and they carry the spirit of the Antichrist. Why? Because they deny that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. They deny it. What you believe, they come to shake it and they are in your midst. They come to talk, but they have not come to believe that Jesus actually came in the flesh. I listened to a, 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 a religious leader, one other religion like that, and said, it's not only Christians who believe in Jesus Christ. And I was so interested in listening to him. I've read their books before. I've seen certain things that I told one of their clerics one time. I said, if you keep reading this, because I saw the English version of their, whatever they call it, the book, and I saw certain things, and I said, if you keep reading this with an open mind, you will encounter Jesus. And I showed him about two passages in their book. And I said, what, how can you interpret this dimension? He told me something. He was shocked. And he said, there are other cleric who are their leaders said they shouldn't be reading those parts. Then from that very day, I knew that there was something strange about that religion. Then the, this very notable cleric made a statement. He said, they know that Jesus Christ is a supernatural being. 
But we Christians, where we got it wrong was that how will he die? That they couldn't have killed Jesus. That he actually went and is coming back again. Because actually, if you go to their holy sites now, they said they have a house for Jesus and a grave where they will bury him. That he's coming to be married and he will die and they will bury him. Beloved, this Christianity we are practicing. So that before they're confusing that we are all serving the same God, <laughs> you better know the God you're serving. Know the Jesus they are talking about. Because First John chapter 1 from verse 1 says, Any spirit that does not confess that Jesus is come in the flesh is the Antichrist. Very easy to identify them. You walk in this, how many times that we are living in now, you don't just believe everything, believe the word of God. Go to scriptures. The word is made manifest to you. Revelation of the word is coming. You saw Paul always preaching in his epistle that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened because the church needs to come more and more to revelation of what Jesus did on the cross and how you can appropriate it and what God has made available for you. Praise the Lord, somebody. He said, Yo, and I say now, the Holy Spirit is here on earth with the saints of God to take us from the earthly, natural, and limited realm to the realms of God. Hallelujah. That's where Jesus wants us to be. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit bringing forth revelation. Here you can easily access everything that's been freely given to you as a child of God. What do you think, God? Do you think God will deny you or what benefits your life? No. Everything he has packaged for you. He said for, that we may know all the things that have been freely given unto you. First Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 9 to 14. If you get home, go and study that scripture. It talks about how we should not rationalize things. We should depend upon the Holy Spirit. He knows the deep things of God. He's able to unveil them to us. This is the year of access. Nobody should be deprived of that privilege of getting access into God's heaven's treasure this year. But you have to come by revelation by the Holy Spirit. So here the Holy Spirit is with you to, to bring you into that natural realm, that sense, that, that, that sensual realm, that realm that makes you a, a, a kana in your decision. He comes to lift you up as a saint of God if you allow him to the realms of God. Where you begin to see things as God sees things. Where you begin to do things as God inspires. Where you begin to know the heart of God. Where you begin to see things beyond the natural. You can see a dead man and the word of God comes to you that this dead body will live again. And you begin to believe beyond the natural sensual realm. I begin to think and believe in the realms of the supernatural. Because that is the call of a Christian. To leave the natural sensual realm and step up into that spiritual supernatural realm where you are prayed even in the realms of God. Therefore, we are seated together in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus, far above all principalities, all powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We are far above them. It's the, it's the need for the revelation to be better on a continuous basis by the Holy Ghost. For every saint who wants to know God deeper and deeper. There are many things we don't know about. And God really wants to unveil to us. But you need to press into him by his spirit. Hallelujah. I said earlier for the fact that you have not yet experienced something. Does not mean that thing is impossible. There are many possibilities in God. But you have to press to the realm where those things are accessible unto you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. As you are right now, I want to ask you a very small question. If God should appear to you physically now, and he speaks audibly to you, and begins to tell you that everything you say from now will begin to come to pass, what are the things that you begin to say? What will inform your confessions from this very hour? He comes to you now and says, Vicky, from this very hour, anything you begin to say will begin to come to pass. Will begin to happen. Do you know that you begin to watch your word? You begin to watch your confessions. You, know, you begin to speak things. He says, we said, word coming to flesh. The dimension is revelatory, right? But now we are moving to the prophetic dimension of the word turning to flesh. Now he's saying to you, if I should say, that every God tells you, my sister, everything you're going to say from now will be going to come to pass. Immediately, instantly, not tomorrow. What are the things you're going to say? Will you begin to say, thunder fire someone? Will you begin to say, this one is goat head? Will you begin to say, I'm a no good? 
I'm a failure. I failed again. We begin to say that. And God said, anything you say will come to pass immediately. What are the confessions you be, we begin to make? What are the things you begin to say? And I tell you, when you walk in the realm of God, and the Holy Spirit lives in the inside of you, inspires your utterance, I tell you, what you say will begin to come to pass. And that is why Christians must mind their language. Tell your neighbor, mind your language. You're a child of God. The Holy Spirit is in the inside of you. You don't just say anything. The word can be made flesh in your life. It depends on you. It depends on me. I tell you, there are times in your life you feel down. Five more minutes, I will be done. Six more minutes. There are times in your life you feel down. You feel hopeless. You feel downcast. But I'm talking prophetic dimension of word made flesh is where I'm going into right now. You don't know where to go anymore. The storms are raging in your life and you don't understand. I've seen instances in scriptures and in real life, see, it's what we take casual and not really casual. I learned something some years ago in a meeting. The man of God said something. Something happened in his life. And he's actually a financier of the, of the kingdom in a sister church in Paraco. I tell you one of their programs. He made a statement. He was sharing his testimony. He made a statement that, do you know, every time you step into church, word is spoken over your life. Prayers have been taken. That atmosphere rolls upon you as you step into the new week. He said he followed it through for years. The pastors might not know. This simple, just take the benediction, invoke the great pastor, speaks over our lives. You don't know the power of it. <laughs> you don't know what you carry as you step out and you're out there afraid. You don't know what you're carrying. Pastor, you're talking about corporate anointing. Do you know what he talks about? What he's talking about? That you come into a gathering and you carry the anointing. You step into the room and you are still lily livered. That you don't know what you're encountering here. The man said, all those dimensions of their church praying, the dimension of what he was carrying from church going out into, into his marketplace until the breakthrough came. He said, value those moments in the presence of God. Those casual words spoken over your life, prayers spoken over, value them very well. If you have not been believing in them, you know some of us are taking them as rituals, routine things now. But I tell you, they are not. Because most times, it's not as if the pastor plan to come and recite a poem to you. He's speaking by the Spirit of God, but you are not decoding what he's saying. You are not carrying on you and moving into your space, into your, into your word, into your marriage, into your ministry with the dimension of what you have received in God's presence. But Lord, change your attitude from, tell your neighbor, change your attitude from today. You are wasting so much heaven's resources in your life. You are wasting too many of heaven's resources in your life. Some don't receive a quarter of what we receive in this house. And it's turning out positive even in their fears because we have casualized everything. We are too familiar with the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It came to pass in the land of Israel. God has given his word that the time has come for them to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Ezra. Ezra chapter 4. The Bible says from verse 23, the word came from God. God began to steer the people and they began to do the work. But enemies arose and they caused the work to be, I mean, to cease with force and power. I love that. With force and power. Satan will not treat you kindly because you're a child of God going somewhere to happen. It comes with force and power. Every opposition. And they caused the work to, the work to cease. Word made flesh. Ezra chapter 5 verse 1. The prophets arose, he do, Zechariah. Because they have moved with God. They know, they operate in the realms of God. They knew that these things you are tackling naturally is not a natural solution. Press unto God and get your solution. Tackle your things in heaven and see the manifestation on earth. And they came out and began to prophesy. You people should go back to work. God has spoken concerning your life. Your marriage will work. Your business will flourish. Your ministry will flourish. Your health will spring forth again. Don't mind the reports of the world. Go back and do something. Do something. About your relationship. About your life. Do something. Go back and start rebuilding. That your destiny you abandoned. Go back to it. That your career you abandoned. That project you are about abandoning. Go back to it. I'm prophesying to your life as the prophets began to speak it will be possible for you it will be possible you will arise and build you will arise and build you will arise and build you will see the end of it you shall not be derailed on, the, on your track you shall not fail in that project you shall not fail in that vision in the name of Jesus and they began to prophesy they began to prophesy and the people received momentum 
prophetic utterances was not money. They were not giving money. They were just speaking. As God's servant always speaking over our lives. They received the grace. They moved ahead and began to do the work. In, 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 in Ezra 6.14, Ezra 6.14, let's see what is there. Ezra 6.14. Somebody say amazing. 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 Ezra 6.14. Word made flesh. Ezra 6.14. It said, and the elders of the Jews, they built and they prospered through the prophesies of Agar the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And they built and finished it. May you build and finish. May you not start and it will just end up like that. May you start, may you continue, may you finish in the name of Jesus. And they finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they finished according to the commandment of the God of Israel and according to the commandment of Cyrus, Darius, and the sex is kings of Persia. God spoke, but some enemies stopped the work. When you begin to see some, some delays, some kind of unnecessary, ungodly delays, stagnation in your life, beloved, receive prophetic, prophetic unction. Receive prophetic covering. Receive the word of God made flesh. Speak it, meditate in it. Receive it, speak it into that your situation. Let it gain traction again. And I tell you, you will see the result. I will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. I just say three things here before I hang and drop the mic. Three faces of the world made flesh. The first face, I'm going to read scripture. There's a scripture that I love so much, captured everything I want to say here. First John chapter, chapter uh, 1. First John chapter 1. It captures everything I want to say now. The first face of word made flesh, the first face you must encounter in your life is the hearing face. To hear. The hearing, what did I say? The hearing face. Your ability to hear. I'm not talking of hearing the news of CNN. Ability to hear the word of God, the voice of God, the word of God that will become flesh in your life. That hearing face is the first thing a Christian must aspire to doing. No matter your level in the faith, the ability to hear clearly is very important. It's very key to your survival as a Christian. The hearing face. You saw in the life of uh, Job. In the life of Job. Job had been talking all kinds of things, said all things. He was justifying, talking about how righteous he has been, yet he was afflicted. His friends have come, have also brought their own theories, their own understanding of spiritual things. All of them have expressed. But the moment God showed up in, his, in the scene, <laughs> with all the righteousness of Job, he was sober. He said in Job 42, verse 5, he said, For the, with the hearing of the ear, I've heard you, but now I've seen you. Because which goes to the second thing I want to say. The seeing face, seeing, your ability to see with your eyes, spiritual eyes. That's the next face. With the hearing of the ear, I've heard but now I can see. But now I repent in dust and ashes because now he has encountered divinity. I was so happy for Job. Why? Because no matter when you are going through challenges of life and you feel that God is not even aware, you are prayed, prayed faster, faster, and nothing happens. The moment there's a burst of glory upon your life, you see the manifestation of God, you'll be encouraged. Job was, in fact, much more than crying. He was encouraged that at long life he could hear God clearly, see his glory. Hallelujah. He said... For by hearing of the ear I've heard, but now I've seen with my eyes. That is the seeing face. The last face is the confirmation face. Confirmation or laying hold. That is when word becomes flesh. Hallelujah. That is where the word of access spoken over our lives will become flesh. Tangibility of it. And I mean, it's laying hold of the physical tangible manifestation face. Where what you have heard, what you have seen, now you are laying hold of it. Let me read to close to this morning. 1 John 1, from verse 1 to 4. I'm reading from the message because it captures these dimensions, these three faces of the world made flesh very absolutely, very aptly. He said, from the very first day, we were there. We were there. Taking it all in. Now listen, he said, we heard it. First face, we heard what? We heard the word with our own ears. He said, we saw it with our own eyes. 
Praise God. We verified or confirmed it with our own hands. Those three faces may they begin to happen in your life. As you are hearing, you are seeing what God is revealing, you are also handling it tangibly, confirmatorily in the name of Jesus. He said, verify it with our own hands. The word of life appeared before our eyes. We saw it happen. We saw it happen. Make things begin to happen for you. You will not just be hearing, you'll be seeing. You'll be experiencing it in the name of Jesus. He said, and now we are telling you in most sober prose that what we witnessed was incredibly this. The infinite life of God himself took shape before us. Now listen. He said, we saw it again, he repeated it. We saw it, we heard it, and now we are telling you, not calling it device fables, we are telling you so you can experience it along with us. This experience of communion with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Our motives, our motive for writing is simply this. We want you to enjoy this too, my God. Your joy will, be, will double our joy. May somebody's joy be doubled in the name of Jesus. So in, in, in a nutshell, that's what, what God has given to me to bring forth to us this morning. The word of God can be made flesh in your life prophetically. Thank God there's a general word, corporate word over our life access. But in that very word, there's a word for you this year. In that very word of access, there's the one that affects your finances. There's the one that affects your ministry. There's the one that affects your life as a whole, your marriage as a whole. And I speak into your life as you're hearing. Everything that hinders you from hearing, whether it's the blockade of the ear, whether it's your preconceived notion, whether it's your negative mindset, whether it's offenses of heart, whether it's doubt or unbelief, whatever is hindering you, may God roll it away now. In the name of Jesus, may your ears become un unstoppable. May your vision become clear. May the bloodness be removed away. May the veil be removed away. May you begin to see clearly. In the name of Jesus, may you handle, may you experience your access. May you lay hold on it. May you confirm the word in the name of Jesus. Somebody give a shout of praise this morning. Give a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I'd like us to pray for God's servant. Let's pray that God will bless him. God will make his word made flesh in his own life, his family, his ministry. I just pray for him. Father, we thank you. Cause your word to also be made flesh in the life of your servant, his home, his marriage, his ministry, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's another time for we to honor the Lord. Remember, when we give our offerings and tithe, we're not giving to any man. We're giving to honor, to honor the Lord. So that must be our attitude. Once that is missing, it means God cannot accept your offering. It must be an attitude of what? Honor. And when you want to give something to God and it's not in honor, then you're just doing it because it's what? Religion. Just like Pastor Richard just preached. Most of us will come to church because we want to, ah, enough in church you must give an offering. No. No, 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 no. In church, you must not give an offering. <laughs> you give an offering because you want to what? Honor the Lord. So let's bring out our tithes, our offering. Let's rise on our feet as the new wine lead us in brief praise and worship. And the ushers help us to take the offering. If you're online, you can give via the transfer. You're on site, you can give also via transfer or physically. God bless you. Oh mama, 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 Oh, my God. 
you for a privilege, Lord, to give an offering, a tithe in honor to your name. We ask, Lord, that you in turn bless each and every one of us because of your obedience to your instruction. Lord, open uncommon doors of access unto us this week and the days ahead in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seat quickly. Let's remember on Wednesday, the 17th of February, uh, Discovery Service holds by 6 p.m. on site here and also will be uh, streaming live. So on Wednesday, let's make a time to attend Discovery Service by 6 p.m. The duty pastor for this week is the Kingwale Adelaide. Let's kindly reach out to him with any information, special testimonies and song that we may want to bring to the attention of the church. Prevailers place holds on Saturday by 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Remember, the web meeting for this moment via the Zoom platform. The pass code is 30, 50, 60, 70, 80. And the password, rather the passcode is prayer, all small characters. From 6.30 in the morning, we pray together. A church that prays together stays and grows together. Hallelujah. All those who are interested in attending the burial of the late father of our brother, brother Azuka Awiwele, on Friday, 26th of February, that is next week, Friday, should kindly send their names and re or reach out to me on or before Sunday, the 21st, that is next Sunday, so that we can plan towards attending the burial. Remember, reinforcement team is meeting immediately after the service so in case you want to join the reinforcement team or you're a member remember to wait behind after this service this service the evangelism team also will be meeting immediately after this service and as we do so the lord will bless you in jesus name amen hallelujah I want to welcome very special people in our midst this morning if today happens to be your very first time worshiping with us on a Sunday morning like this, can we see you just wave to the Lord? Can we wave to the Lord? Anybody? Anybody? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage us just like Pastor has been encouraging us this month of February. Let's take out the time to invite someone. Just one person every Sunday. And as we do so, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Join me as we welcome our pastor. Praise the Lord. I'm sure you've been blessed today. Glory to God. Shall we put our hands together for Pastor Richard for ministering powerfully to us this morning? Amen. Um, we'd like to challenge us, adult members of the church, this month of February, we want to challenge us on two levels to reach out, evangelize, talk to someone around you. Could be in your work environment, could be in your residential environment could be in your school environment um, could be a family member could be a friend a colleague um, preach the gospel of Christ let us reach out and win souls this month I encourage us I appeal to us to do that and then also I challenge us to invite people to church people who are either not serious in their relationship with God or have no relationship at all or are not churched they don't have a local church where they are actively involved as members um, we encourage us to reach out to some people in the course of this month if you have details of such people you would like us to join with you to pray for such people or you are inviting them and they don't know how to get to church and maybe they are in cluster. Maybe there are three people in this area. There are five people in this area. We have a bus uh, arrangement, a transportation arrangement for such people. Um, so if you will, um, for now, if you will um, 
send such details to Pastor Clinton, Maxine's uh, phone number, the name of the person you are reaching out to, you are inviting to church, their mobile phone number, their location address where they can be picked from. I mean, the route where they can be picked from. We might not be picking people from their houses, but we'll have a bus route. Let's say Transamadi now. We'll pass along Transamadi, maybe Modakat, roundabout axis, maybe Unkwogu, roundabout, I mean, Unkwogu Junction, roundabout axis. Uh, then we can pick people along such routes. That's what we mean. We don't mean we're driving off Transamadi, trying to locate a particular house. 20 minutes we're here to locate it. No. Um, so if you have some people, we would like to also make the uh, bus transportation arrangement available. Um, so please let us take this appeal and clarion call serious to invite people to church, particularly this month. The last Sunday of the month, um, henceforth from this month of February, will serve as a combined service once a month. We want to be able to come together. A combined service will still observe the COVID protocols, but once a month, so from a fortnight from today, the last Sunday of the month of February, we'll have a combined service. Normal, I mean, um, multiple services, two services. First service starts 8.30, second service starts 10.15, but combined service, one service, and it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. So please, let's take note of that, and it's, uh, that commences from this month of February. We have a car park arrangement, additional car park arrangement. We'll park on this side of the rail. On the other side of the rail, just like adjacent to us, we have a property uh, that are, we have paid for. We've rigged out to the owner of the property. We've arranged for like an annual lease arrangement um, for the facility so we can park there. So in case the security people or the parks people or the protocol people are guiding us in that direction, don't think they're sending your vehicle to a place where it's not safe or where it cannot be accounted for. It's been arranged for, and then also we'll make sure that it's also well secure in that well secured in that environment. Um, we want to celebrate our ladies in the house. Today is Valentine's Day. Is that why ushers are wearing red in the house? Ushers wearing red. Some of the music people wearing red. Some of the intercessory people wearing red. Red. Some of the. <laughs> So um, we want to celebrate uh, Valentine with our sisters, the single ladies in the house or um, single uh, mothers in the house or um, widow, um, the widows in the house. We want to celebrate this day to let you know that we love you, we care for you, and we are here for you. We stand with you and we celebrate with you on this day so that you don't have to get into anything that is outrageous ungodly things you can regret hereafter. So on a day like this, we want to celebrate with all such ladies. We did that in the first service. They had their cake. They caught their cake. We took pictures with them. And so if you are such, uh, in such category in this second service, we also like to celebrate with such people. We like the protocol people to help us to bring the cake to the front so that we can do that quickly. Do we have such ladies in the house this morning? Can we see? Yeah, please celebrate them. Please step forward, step forward. Even as we bring the cake forward and let's celebrate with them, rejoice with them, honor them on this special occasion. So, Valentine cake for our Valentine ladies. We celebrate you. We love you all with the love of God. Please, let's. And the cake is just for them. Ma okay. First service people, combine honors. No, only. only only there's a review. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry for the embarrassment. I, it's not in my nature. Please, sorry about that. Yeah, so only Sophia. Oh, so only Sophia will carry this thing to her house. Oh, powerful. Okay. Oh, I've you? forgotten your name. Oh. I've forgotten your name. George. George, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe they share with the brothers. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, they, they'll share oh, with the brothers because they can't have Please join us. Join us. Join us. <laughs> gentlemen in the house, gentlemen. <laughs> Sophia. Yes, 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 gentlemen, please celebrate. Yeah, Emmanuel, yes, John, Godwin. Praise 
IC Collins or Kocha. Uh, I keep forgetting your name. Um, Stanley, yes. Oh, beautiful. Good. Thank you for recognizing. I mean, Frank, reminding me about the gentleman. Thank you. Adewale. Are you just coming to service? Ah, because I saw when you just came through the door now. Okay, beautiful. All right. So, have the pictures been taken? Pictures taken? Uh, no, I will not wait. Oh. <laughs> All right, so we celebrate with you. We thank God for your lives. We trust God that God will bring godly relationships into your life, godly spouses, godly gentlemen, godly ladies for holy matrimony in Jesus' name. We'd like you to know that we love you. You are dear to us. You are, and we, we, you, are, you have a special place in our hearts. And we trust God to honor you, elevate you, celebrate you, grant you access into great and mighty things for your lives in Jesus' name. So, the cake is for all our gentlemen and ladies here. No, Enjoy it all by yourself. My Beautiful. Love you. All right, thank you. thank you. Praise God. Shall we rise to our feet to close the service? As the world celebrates what they call Valentine's Day, I pray that God himself will celebrate every one of you. I pray that God's love will abound towards you. You will gain access into God's love, God's heart. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will guide your affairs. The Lord will surround you with favor, cause his goodness to be upon you. I pray that God will distinguish you in the work of your hands, make you productive, make you favored, make you enabled. I pray that God will recommend your gifts, recommend your abilities, recommend your talents, set you up, put you in the windows of life where the kings of the earth, captains, will recognize what you carry, what you can do, how you can add value, and the kings of the earth, the queens of the earth, will be attracted to the brightness of your rising in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Shall we take the benediction together? Now, may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, walking in me what is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Happy Valentine's Day in Jesus' name.